always do something. Good afternoon. afternoon. Uh, as you all know, and uh, certainly Kareem uh, restated it, uh, Iran and its proxies operating in Yemen, Syria, and Iraq also, conducted an unprecedented attack on the state of Israel with over 300 weapons, including more than 100 ballistic missiles, as well as land attack cruise missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles or drones. President Biden instructed the United States to defend Israel to the maximum extent possible and defeat that attack, and we did. With the support of our partners, the United States enabled Israel to spectacular, spectacularly defeat it. Despite launching more than those 300 weapons from Iran in the region, Israel and a coalition of partners were able to defeat 99% of the attacks. There was virtually no infrastructure damage to Israel. But their attack requires an unequivocal condemnation from the international community. And so, as Karine said, the president convened the G7 yesterday, and they have forcefully condemned that attack and urged for calm and de-escalation. And I'd like to take just a few minutes to correct the record on uh, a few points that have come out in the last uh, several hours. I've seen reporting that the Iranians meant to fail, that this spectacular and embarrassing failure was all by design. I've also seen uh, Iran say that they provided early warning to help Israel prepare its defenses and limit any potential damage. All of this is categorically false. To coin the phrase from the president, or still a phrase from the president, it's malarkey. This attack failed because it was defeated by Israel, by the United States, and by a coalition of other partners committed to Israel's defense. So let's be straight. Given the scale of this attack, Iran's intent was clearly to cause significant destruction and casualties. Iranian leaders launched so many missiles and other munitions because they knew that many were going to be defeated. But the aim was to get as many of them through Israel's defenses as possible. Now, I've also seen this speculation about messages passed forth and warnings. We did receive messages from Iran, and they received messages from us too. But there was never any message to us or to anyone else on the time frame, the targets, or the type of response. In fact, before yesterday, it was presumed that 100 ballistic missiles might overwhelm even the best defensive systems. That was Iran's intent, and as you all saw for yourself, it didn't work. This ta attack was defeated thanks to our preparations, to a coalition of committed partners, and to Israel's remarkable defensive systems. And I want to focus on that last point for just a moment. Israel today is in a far stronger strategic position than it was only a few days ago. Iran's vaunted missile program, something it has used to threaten Israel in the region, <coughs> proved to be far less effective. Israel's defenses, on the other hand, proved even better than many had long assumed. Israel's defense was strengthened by a coalition of countries led by the United States and working together. <coughs> the United States has never before so extensively and so directly defended Israel from attack. To ensure that that continues to be the case, the House of Representatives must urgently pass the National Security Supplemental, which has already passed the Senate with overwhelming bipartisan support. That supplemental includes funding that the President requested for the Iron Dome and David Sling system, systems that saved countless lives this weekend and have saved many lives from Hamas and from Hezbollah rockets over the past six months. Passing that bill is the fastest and surest way to get Israel the aid it needs. And we must act urgently to replenish Israel's air defenses, just as Congress must act urgently to replenish, replenish Ukraine's air defenses, which also continue to be attacked every single day with the same Iranian-made Iranian drones. Now, finally, much of the world today is standing with Israel. When the president spoke to the G7 leaders yesterday, they were unified in their condemnation of Iran and their determination to hold Iran accountable at the president's direction. Our teams are now following up with G7 capitals on new multilateral sanctions to target Iran's missile and other nefarious programs. G7 countries that had yet to designate the IRGC a terrorist organization are now considering doing so. And going forward, we will be working to further isolate Iran internationally and increase economic and other forms of pressure. So that's the upshot here. A stronger Israel, a weaker Iran, a more unified alliance of partners. That was not Iran's intent when it launched this attack on Saturday night, not even close. And again, they failed. They failed utterly. Now, as you also know, President Biden is welcoming both the Iraqi Prime Minister and the uh, Prime Minister Peter Fiala of the Czech Republic to the White House. 
President and Prime Minister Al Sudani from Iraq will discuss the U.S. and Iraq's shared vision for our broad, multifaceted relationship. During the meeting, the, these leaders will re reaffirm their commitment to advancing regional stability, to expanding opportunities for Iraq's people, and reinforcing Iraq's sovereignty, security, and stability. The Iraqi Prime Minister will be here for almost a week, and in that time, he will meet a range of administration officials, including both Secretary Blinken at the State Department and Secretary Austin at the Defense Department. He will have opportunities to share his priorities and vision for Iraq with a variety of audiences here in Washington and in other parts of the United States. Now, of course, the President will be taking the opportunity to discuss how we will continue to work with Prime Minister Sudani to defuse regional tensions and to prevent Iraq from being drawn into conflict. Iraq, the President firmly believes, is central to the region's stability. And then later, as Kareem previewed, uh, he'll have a chance to meet with uh, President, uh, I'm sorry, Prime Minister Fiala to celebrate the 25th anniversary uh, of the Czech Republic as a NATO ally. Over the past 25 years, our alliance has grown stronger, and the relationship between our two countries have grown even closer as we've deepened defense cooperation, including through the Czech Republic's purchase of 24 F-35 fighters earlier this year. The President will congratulate the Prime Minister on legislation that Czechia recently passed, requiring it to spend at least 2% of its GDP on defense, which, as you know, is the NATO goal. The leaders will also discuss their strong support for Ukraine, and the President will thank the Prime Minister for leading an effort to help secure nearly 1 million rounds of ammunition for Ukraine. And one more thing, if you'll just bear with me, I'm almost done. Today marks the one-year conflict in Sudan. Since fighting erupted a year ago, civilians have been forced to bear the brunt of this senseless conflict. Thousands have been killed and wounded. Women and girls have been kidnapped and assaulted. Hundreds of thousands of families have been displaced. Communities and livelihoods have been utterly destroyed. And famine now is threatening to take hold. That's why the United States continues to commit resources to create conditions for a potential peace process, to hold accountable actors who are seeking to sow more violence, and to assure that humanitarian assistance reaches the civilians who urgently need it. We reiterate our calls for all parties in this conflict to lay down their weapons and put an end to this intolerable violence for the future of Sudan, but most of all for the future of the Sudanese people. Thank you. Appreciate your patience. Um, uh, Israel's military chief, Jeff